Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to look at what we call absolute magnitude. In the previous videos, we looked at apparent magnitude, how bright things appear in the sky relative from where we are looking. So relative from the Earth, we'll look at the object in the sky, stars, galaxies, nebulas, whatever they may be, and they appear to us at a certain brightness, so that's called the apparent brightness. But the absolute brightness is how bright they actually are. Now, that's kind of a strange concept. How bright are they? Well, what we can do is we can put the object at a standard distance away from us. If we put all the object at that distance, then we would compare the brightness to one another. Matter of fact, the absolute brightness of an object is equal to the apparent brightness of the object if it's placed at that standard distance. The question is, what is that standard distance? And it turns out how bright an object would be, so absolute magnitude is how bright it would appear at the standard distance of, and we picked that to be 10 parsecs. Now, of course, 10 parsecs, since each parsec is 3.26 light years, that would be the same as 32.6 light years. So, the absolute magnitude of an object, of a star, a galaxy, whatever we may be looking at, is equal to the apparent brightness if we place the object at a distance of 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so for example, we have the star Betelgeuse, and it has an apparent magnitude equal to plus 0 0.58. Actually, Betelgeuse varies a little bit in brightness because it's kind of a variable star, but the average magnitude, absolute, or I should say the average apparent magnitude is plus 0.58. Now, what would happen if we took Betelgeuse and placed it at a distance of 10 parsecs away? So here's Betelgeuse, and it turns out if we placed it there, the apparent magnitude would be minus 6, which makes it the absolute magnitude. So big M is equal to minus 6.0 for Betelgeuse at a distance of 10 parsecs, and the apparent magnitude, small m, is equal to 0 0.58. So when we use small m, we do mean apparent magnitude. And when we use the big M, we call it the absolute magnitude. So if we place Betelgeuse at a distance of 32.6 light years, it would appear at a minus 6.0. It would be brighter than the planet Venus by actually quite a bit. It would be brighter by almost a factor of five. So Betelgeuse would look five times as bright as Venus at a distance of 32.6 light years, but the way it looks to us from wherever it is, it's only a plus 0.58. So it's a lot dimmer where it is than where, what it would appear to be if it was 10 parsecs away. Answer is, Betelgeuse must be much farther away than 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years because it appears a lot dimmer to us at the distance where it's at than what it would be if it was a 10 parsecs away. Now, how does that compare to our sun? Well, if we took our sun and placed it at a distance of 10 parsecs, you would be surprised. It would have a magnitude, so this would be Betelgeuse, and the sun, magnitude of the sun, would be about a plus 4.8, approximately in that neighborhood. So notice how much brighter Betelgeuse is compared to the sun at the same distance. So that's how we find the absolute magnitude of a star. We simply imagine that we place it at a distance of 10 parsecs, and then we calculate how bright it would, would appear if it was at that distance, and that's how we can compare one star to the next. So you can see that in this case, the sun is a much dimmer star than Betelgeuse in actuality. Of course, the sun, being the closest object in the sky to us, uh, as far as stars are concerned, is a minus 26.7 for apparent magnitude when Betelgeuse is only a plus 0.58. But side by side, at the standard distance of 10 parsecs, Betelgeuse is much brighter than the sun, therefore it puts out a lot more light. <clears throat> now, how much brighter is that? So using these, these numbers right here, the delta M, the delta M would be equal to uh, 4.8 minus a minus 6.0, that would be about a 10.8 difference in the magnitudes. Then what we do with that is we take 2.512 raised to the 10.8 power, and with a calculator, we'll find out really quick, 2.512 e to the 10, oh, let me do that again, 2.512 
raised to the 10.8 power. It's uh, wow, about 21,000, 21,000 times. So that means that Betelgeuse is 21,000 times as bright as the sun. If you could put them side by side, you would need 21,000 suns to put out as much light as Betelgeuse. So there you can see that Betelgeuse is indeed a very bright star, partially because it's a huge star. It's enormous in size and therefore puts out a lot more light. So that's what we mean by absolute magnitude. It's simply a comparison to objects placed at the standard distance of 10 parsecs. And in the case of Betelgeuse, it is an enormous star. Are the stars bigger and brighter than Betelgeuse? Yes, there are. Are the stars dimmer than the sun? There's plenty of those. So it goes all over the gamut. There's a lot, a, an enormous range in brightnesses, but at least you can see um, uh, just with these two stars in comparison. What's interesting to note, imagine that, we look, uh, that we're looking at a star like the sun, the size of the sun, at 10 parsecs away. If the magnitude then it would appear at 4.8, you could barely see that with the naked eye. Matter of fact, living in a city environment with street lights, you wouldn't even be able to see the sun at a distance of 10 parsecs. And yet, if you were to place Betelgeuse at that distance, it would be an enormously bright object in the sky. So that gives you new appreciation for the difference in sizes and the difference in brightnesses. So that's what we mean by absolute magnitude.